sharp. <laughs> Okay, I my day. Thank you. Call the December 13th, 2023 meeting of the Trees and Greenery Committee to order. Um, we have the minutes from the November meeting. Any comments? And I just have this awful thought <laughs> who's going to review the meeting, the minutes That's every exactly month? What I was thinking. Oh. Exactly. Oh. And then I look to Michael. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> uh, wow. I should, you know, I can, I'll just designate that. I'll, I'll, I'll take that over. Oh, okay. 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 I feel like that should be one of my okay, responsibilities. Mr. Social Butterfly, you'll pass that on. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll move to accept that. the minutes. Be sure to, be sure to <laughs> change second. Rockland Avenue. What's that? I said when you start reviewing minutes, be sure to change Rockland Avenue. To change ah, Rockland, Rockland Street. Street. Oh, is it Street? I always do that. Thank you. <laughs> well, Dick, just because you're retiring from the committee doesn't mean you can... You can't read. Uh, that's, that's, that's right. You no. Know. That's right. You can watch the meeting, and then you can amend the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and you can send us your comments. Yeah, take that under advice. Me. Okay. <laughs> I'll move to uh, accept minutes. Okay, uh -huh. tree removal request, Rockland Avenue at Kent Street, a Norway maple. Yeah, so um, it's in that um, kind of dead-ended dead -ended section of Rockland Street, not Avenue. Um, I believe uh, Dick Adams mentioned it to me this past summer, so it's been under our radar for, on our radar, excuse me, for a little bit, but there's a large wound with some decaying, large wound at the base with some decaying wood. Um, holes all throughout the the, the canopy um bunch of storm damage it's just in a in a rough spot and feel it's appropriate to remove it other than that it's okay other than that it's okay yeah um do we have a motion to recommend removal or is anyone here on that, on that particular i'm here to speak about a different show. Oh, which one uh, oh okay okay well that's what thank you uh, are you here for a specific? The, the lat, the, the, no. Uh, yes, it's corn. Yeah, it's corn. Oh, <laughs> I was just here to see Dick's last meeting. Uh, 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 so, um, we have a motion to recommend removal. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, uh, Rockland <laughs> Avenue at Sherbin. <laughs> Sherbin Ave. Um, so, an ash tree had a Pretty good sized tear out from from a storm recently, uh, which is just pretty much mirrored to another wound that's currently trying to seal over. Um, and the fact that it's an ash, I just have a feeling that with those two decent sized wounds paired with EAB, it's almost like we should just kind of beat it to the punch and and remove and get ready for planting next spring. So, any comments or questions about um, that particular? What tree? happened to that tree? Storm damage, just a just a large leader tear out on that. Um, I actually I haven't seen that one. That was something that the crew just picked up when they were doing storm damage um, cleanup. And when I was there looking at the other tree up at the top of Rockland, I ended up seeing that one. It's like, all right, well, we should we might as well just uh -huh. while we're here in this area, do a little bit more work and clean it up a little bit more nicely. Morning, AJ. Morning. Good morning. Okay. Any um, do I have a motion to recommend recommend removal? I'll recommend removal for that Second. tree. It's pretty sad. Seconded by Joanna. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Before, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, eighty-eight Lincoln Lincoln Avenue. Um, yeah. And we we discussed this last <laughs> meet two meetings ago. October. Uh, October. And um, we voted to recommend removal. Uh, and um, I asked to revisit it, uh, and so that's what we're doing today. And I wonder if you speak first. Uh... Yeah. So um, my opinion hasn't changed much, and I think um, really the the conversation in October was prompted by another incident of storm damage that that fell and, and damaged um, some some private property. Um, so the tree does have, in my opinion, some structural issues. I think the the most notable is all the like large leaders coming off of that one central um, stem of the tree. 
So that's a lot of included bark. There's a lot of weight up there. Um, but the history of this tree, uh, when I first started years ago, there was some root damage that occurred. So we did some pretty heavy uh, reduction pruning of a leader going over that backyard and over the house now. Um, and then since then, we've pretty much pruned that tree uh, in one way or another heavily, over, but essentially once a year, uh, with the exception of this past year. So um, I think there are potentially other things we can do instead of removal, like cabling and bracing, but those, I feel like those, we don't, we don't do that in house. And because it kind of offers a false sense of security, in my opinion, um, what we tend to do is we do the uh, retrenchment prunes where we take a lot of weight, a lot of sale out of the tree. Um, and that kind of does, that does what we want. It reduces that weight. It helps prevent any kind of included bark and other major leader tear outs. Um, yeah. What's included bark? It's when you have kind of two stems of the tree mm -hmm. growing so closely that mm -hmm. there isn't a complete seal of, of bark around mm -hmm. that tree. And that, that tends to want to split um, because that sh a lot of that tree's holding wood strength is based on um, how intact that outermost layer of the tree is. And when you have leaders coming out of like a, one limb, what does that mean? Uh, so I'm, I'm, I just mean to say, so when you look at that tree and you have that one single stem coming from the ground, about 15, maybe 10 to 15 feet up, mm -hmm. that's when you see all of those other branches and kind of hold it up like your hand. Right. Kind of how you have fingers coming off of that one part of your hand. You have branches, like very large leaders, also connected in a very close proximity, which then means that there's included bark kind of between four, three to four liters up there. Mm -hmm. And again, that's because it's not a solid um, attachment. Well, it's a solid attachment point, but because they're so close, it's really. Yeah, that's where we see a lot of tear outs. We'll see seams starting to form a lot of the weight shifts up there. So when we do the retrenchment prune, it's like taking a lot of that sail, a lot of that weight to reduce wind loading, which which keeps that it keeps it more stable, I guess, in ad adverse weather. So that certainly helps, but it's not it's not a um, like a cure for included bark. There's really nothing to do for that specifically. If you look at that tree back on end of Rockland and Sherburn, wasn't a great example, but if you look at the top, not the bottom, you can see where there was two parts of that same tree fighting for that same space. Mm -hmm. And it kind of, you know, they just wiggle and push and wiggle and push, and eventually one of them gets too big. Interesting. Okay. Um, and then also there are, you know, we can tell that the tree is a little stressed only because there are a lot of water sprouting. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of water sprouting occurring. So that tells me the tree is trying to um yeah when you mean yeah. water sprouting means small, small, small yeah coming yep, out. And so no, that's yeah. what that is and there's it's it's you can really easily tell because it's it's down on the tree at least uh height wise over the sidewalk over the road there's quite a bit of it too so um <laughs> i just want to keep this tree because it's such an educational tool <laughs> yeah <laughs> sure we have uh, the uh why don't you come up at property and I'm sorry I can't remember your name from oh yeah um, uh, Alex Griner the homeowner at 88 Lincoln I see my wife is on the uh the zoom so I I I don't have much new to say but I'll say it again anyway my number one concern as I mentioned in October is is just from a safety perspective far and away I, I my family lives there the two young daughters um the, the main living part of the house is right on that side where the tree would, if something did happen to the tree, that's where it would hit. The, the girls' bedrooms are up there. So we were fortunate, I would say, in the, the September storm, it brought down a moderately sized limb. It collapsed into the backyard, uh, created a couple thousand dollars of damage to the fence. That can be fixed. Um, you know, but it's really, if anything were to happen to the the tree that would cause it to fall down to the main part of the living area, that obviously gives you a lot of concern as a as a parent. Um, the financial aspects as a homeowner as well, I probably think I've become better educated just in the last couple months in dealing with the city's insurance and our own homeowner's insurance. Um, probably not news to anybody here, but for me, you know, if a, a tree falls from your neighbor's yard or the city's property, it's generally considered your own homeowner's insurance uh, coverage because it's an active nature. You couldn't possibly predict when these things would happen, which I totally get. But for me now that we, I think it's acknowledged or well known that, that the trees obviously has health concerns and that's why it's in front of this committee and there's something we can do about it. Um, I would just 
ask the committee to vote again to to, to remove it to eliminate the the safety concerns and the financial risk as a as a homeowner. Um, I get that the trees in fair con fair condition, and if it were somewhere else on city property, if it were down the street in Langdon Park or in South Mill, uh, you'd leave it up there and you'd, you'd take you'd take the risk. And if it came down in the storm, it came down in the storm, so be it. But the proximity to my house and and the size of the tree, it's a obviously a large, beautiful old tree. I don't want to see it. I, I would I don't want to see it taken down just from an aesthetic standpoint, but it's it's just right on top of the property right there. So I think that's my number my number one concern. So I would I would I'd like that to outweigh the desire to keep the tree is to address the safety concerns. So um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. How old is that tree? Old. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't tell you. And it's a silver maple. Which yeah. are prone to being brittle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, does Katie want to say anything? Uh, Kate, would you like to uh, speak? Nope, I'm good. I think Alex addressed all of our concerns. Okay. So, Peter, you're the one who wanted to talk about this tree again. Oh, well, I wanted to revisit it and. Um, so, say a little bit more. I, about I, yeah, that. my question, the. The there's a one trunk that goes back towards the house. Can that be removed? And what does that do, in your opinion, in terms of the, the safety? I think we'd have to look at the overall um, canopy of the tree afterward. So if it's if it's a sizable photosynthesizing part of the tree that would adversely affect the total health of the tree afterward. I think that would be sort of my first, like the first phase for me kind of looking into that. Um, I know it wouldn't completely alleviate uh, that the issue of the included bark and the potential for other parts of the tree coming down. So that's, um, I don't know, I, I guess that's where my, my first thought would be is to how, how, much are we removing and how adversely is this going to affect the tree health mm -hmm. into the future? So Peter, you're talking about that yeah. branch on the, the tree on the right. This one right here? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an awfully large molar. Peter, I had staff out with me yesterday, new staff that we're doing some training on and we looked at that very thing because she thought she wanted to keep it. I didn't tell her any of the history of the tree, you know, that just start looking at it. And you'd actually remove two stems uh, so you're going to remove about 50% of the crown. So that big stem going that way and the other stem sort of in the back uh, right. is hollow. Peter, if you keep going up with your pointer, Thank you. uh, take a left and go to the, that stem right in there. Uh, there's some hollow pieces in that stem uh, up there. There's something came out of there when we were looking at the tree. <laughs> it's just, you know, an old limb hole and, you know, something, you know, is, is now living in the cavity up in there. And um, this is this photo, I believe, is from 2011. So yeah. we've uh, that tree on the right is already gone, yeah, and then gone. we've done some pretty um, pretty extensive pruning house side on that tree. Uh, in addition to to, it's it's kind of hard to tell now, but we've we've at least visited this tree three times in the past four years. Question um, for the limb that fell in September: Where would you rate that storm that caused that limb to to crack and? I think for what it's worth, we had other Primex claims relating to that storm as well. And coincidentally, another silver maple on Aldrich that we also voted to remove also was a tear out from included bark. So, um, yeah, I don't know. And I, I, I regret to have not seen whatever storm damage occurred by the time I went and checked it out. Uh, it was already cleaned up. And, yeah. and so I, I can't explicitly say um maybe alex if you if you have an idea of how large the piece was that that tore out oh gosh it was probably maybe you know katie's on as well she might remember because she was home when it, when it okay it was probably it was probably 20 foot 20 foot long okay large branch that snapped off you can still see where it snapped off so it was okay. one of those massive pieces fortunately but gotcha uh, silver maples make me anxious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, yeah. they tend to fail yeah those that seems it's a big limb. <laughs> I would make a motion for removal. I'll second that. Uh, is there any discussion? I just I I think <clears throat> given kind of what was said, the fact that this tree has continuously had some issues, um, 
the fact that a large branch broke down very close to the house um, and that we are coming into bad weather season, it, it, it seems like it could potentially be a perfect storm. Um, whether that causes, you know, direct harm to life or just continuous problems. Historically, we voted to honor Lisa DeStefano's request on Middle Street five years ago in a similar situation where the tree was valuable and worth savings, but her case was well stated as a safety concern to her house and her property. It was removed in two um, Sour woods were put in its place and mm -hmm. they're doing quite well. It, it actually, uh, I had two silver maples removed when I came to this committee because the exact same concern, my kid's bedroom was right there. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the trees that's replacement is doing great. The other one's that weird tree on the corner. The linden. Yeah. <laughs> a linden. We don't know. It's what a it weird is. tree. <laughs> I don't know who planted that. Oh, and I think all we, when people, citizens come to this committee and, and voice their opinions, I think we really take, uh, we listen. And we appreciate people coming. We do. Thanks. Any other discussion? Um, I would say that we had a very beautiful, tall silver maple on the property right next to us and uh, not as old as, as, as yours, but um the, a whole limb came right down and they parked their cars right under the tree. And luckily it didn't hit the car, but it came right down next to the car and it, then they removed the tree. But it, I mean, it was very sad to see it go, but it, it's a safety concern and they have two children. And um, as much as I love that tree, I think it's the right thing to remove it. Okay. I will uh, be reversing my original vote. Okay. <laughs> um, motion to recommend removal by Joanna, seconded by Debbie, by, by Peter. Peter. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, I think it passes. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you for your follow up. Enjoy the holidays. Thank you. You too. So you guys go and do that yourself. Mm. Okay. Arbor Day, before, Max says. Peter, before we get to that, uh, Max, so um, there's a. Internal pictures. Okay. So everybody can see it. Yeah, we'll, absolutely. We'll get some pictures yeah. during or in the process of removal. Well, that's will great. That's okay. just what I was, I was going to ask. Uh, there's a lot of uh, ash trees in the queue to be mm -hmm. cut. There are. I just wondered what the timing is because um, uh, a friend and myself, we thought we would attack chronicling some of those since they're mm. sort of the bigger trees of Portsmouth. Sure. So I'd love to work with you because I'd hate to show up and it be gone. For, uh, I'm for learning the 88, about tree photography. For 88 Lincoln, you mean? For some of the ash trees. All the ash. ash. Yeah, we thought yeah. that because they're the big trees in Portsmouth. There's a lot of chatter about it. So we thought, sure. why not take some photos of them? And yeah. I don't know, they might end up somewhere. Absolutely. Hmm. Yeah, I know we have three in Haven Park. So right. I'll I'll let you know. Right. Um, I can't remember what that street is right there, but there, that side street. Livermore. Livermore. Thank Livermore. you. Yeah, There's so on that there. dead end, there are three right, right there that... We've, the one at my house. Yes, the one at yes. Yeah. So you'll know when we're there for. for oh, that I want to know before. <laughs> okay. I Fair enough. Mean about that whole thing, and I, I sure. did want to, if this is a good time, I wanted to t uh, say that um, the signage, the Emerald mm -hmm. Ash Board signage that you made was is fabulous. It's awesome. Very eye catching. It's yeah. Very professional. Thank you. Um, and uh, I've noticed because I see what goes on outside my house people stop and really read it they stop oh, nice. they look they shake their heads and then they go on <laughs> sure. uh but i hope that you have posted it um around places yeah. and i love how you put it inside uh the sidewalk <clears throat> um it's gotten a lot of notice so i think nice. it's working it's a good educational tool i appreciate yeah, it yeah thank you we um we we made those with our sign um our sign uh, utility mechanic Jeff Boucher, um, Boucher, excuse me. Um, so he he has a lot to do with how that sign is designed and and everything about it. So, and then we put those up at Cass and Middle as well, and that's facing the road. And I only did that just because you get a lot of traffic coming up Cass. And um, but anyway, so the pickleball courts, and I've I've talked with the rec department, and they've been uh, really um, accommodating for for us hanging signs. 
So um, you don't necessarily hang them on the ash. You just try to put them out. Yeah. So yep. So I've zip tied them right. to fences down at Public Works, uh, right at the entrance of the recycling center, as well as the fence on the pickleball court. Oh, good. Um, right. There are a few more. I think I've really only hung them on three ash so far that are already designated for removal. So, um, but yeah, we're making, I think about five more are already in the queue and we're, we're just looking for more spots to hang them. Are you considering the, to put them in Haven Park? On the Actually, that is the, I put one at Haven Park, okay. kind of okay. down at the end of Livermore right. where all the dog, um, dog walkers great. are that hanging out. That is a good out. place to, yeah. good. Yeah. Okay, great. Wonderful. Um, all right. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, third thing on the agenda, Arbor Day 2024. Max yeah. has some thoughts on that. So I think, <clears throat> and I don't know, it may be the, the brainchild of Dick Adams, but somebody turned me on to the idea of planting some of those chestnut trees that are from the Moffat Lad House, the Whipple chestnut. So I think that'd be really neat to have an event where we invite uh, that uh, historic Portsmouth to come down and talk about the historic implications of that tree and um, I think there are about four saplings, so it'd be really neat to get those planted out in in some city property and yeah. let them let them grow up a little bit. So that's that's just my rough idea. Obviously, it'd be I'd love some input, and if anyone else had any other ideas on what we can do for Arbor Day, but uh, I think that would be a pretty pretty neat little event. And would there be some plan? Uh, I'm sure that between you and AJ, some plan to protect those if the should... yeah. I kind of figured they're, I mean, they're going to be small, so they might look kind of like a little weed or something like that. But yeah, certainly protecting them and <clears throat> until they become more established and taller and more obviously a tree we want to protect from mechanical damage. So do they transplant well? Yeah, they're, they're, they're growing to still see things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tree, you know, trees big as a house plant. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So whether we get nuts or where you get the seedlings from them, there's a group that grows out the seed, has grown out their seedlings in the past. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, I love it's a it. great idea. I love cross pollinating all yeah. the things. <laughs> I think um uh kind of influenced by Chuck Baxter's, he did that tree planting out on uh, Pierce Island, which I thought was really neat, and had yeah. that blessed by some Native Americans, and I thought mm -hmm. that was just a cool, like you were saying, sort of a cross pollination of of us and then some other organization. So I think that'd be pretty. Yep, great idea. Love it um tree purchase order um yeah so uh i don't know if you all printed it out but um <laughs> we have quite a few um trees and they're all confirmed ready to go up at schichtel so uh, we're doing 150 as as i've mentioned in the past um so not quite as many as 200 from this past spring but more on average than what we typically do which is 100 um i'm trying to remember um, I was going to bring it up. Sorry. <laughs> uh, there are a few, uh, uh, trees that we, I've looked back through, I think I have records of since 2015. Uh, there are a few trees that we haven't at all planted any kind of species or even the genus of. So it'd be, it'd be really neat to see how they do. I think one of them's a hardy rubber tree. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry that I don't have this pulled up, but, um, we have five of them on the list. Yeah, yeah. So I, I kept um, I, for the sake of variety, the most we're buying is five of any one kind. So, cool. um, yeah. So if anyone has any comments or questions about it, while I try and pull up the yeah, well, that <laughs> was list. the question mark I have on my list, but I looked it up and yeah. it said it's pest resistant, uh, can withstand some drought. Yep. Not for poorly drained soils. Um. And it needs a wide planting strip, which would probably be important. Yeah. You know, when you're planting them. Yeah, that's. But, I'll, um, I'll take a note of that for sure. <laughs> yeah, I just I was surprised to see that on the list, but. Um, and I mean, th so it's not ex exclusively just for um, planting in those right of way strips. I mean, I'd love to put one into a park and really see what, like, how well it can flourish in yeah. kind of a wider open space. It gets pretty tall. Yeah. So, yeah. I love tall trees. Yeah. <laughs> um, question, and I'm sure you've taken this into consideration. Um, within the USDA zones, as we're like starting to see them shift, yeah. was that taken in account of, of this 
list in order. Yeah, so it's yeah, uh so winters are still pretty cold up here, but like on average we're skewing a little yeah. bit warmer. So yeah, certainly planting trees that are more prone to at least right now that are more southern. Okay. Um I think we're I'm trying out a different oak that I didn't have a record of planting. Um which one is that? The yeah. chinkapin oak. Mm -hmm. So um, I know those typically are found in more southern states, but they're all they're also pretty cold hardy as well. Still, not quite the same as our native trees up here yeah. that are really accustomed to the to the cold winters. But we'll try it out. I mean, we're um, you're right. That's I think about that all the time. Like how how are the trees that we planted 20 years ago going to fare in 20 or 30 more years? So the better we can do now at selecting trees that have that wider USDA cold hardiness zone and that can tolerate maybe more drought conditions, um, we're, we're going to be better off for it in the future. Yeah, thank you. And Michael has his own experimental planting area. <laughs> uh, I should have, I should have, you know, had you help me see if there were some cool, I've cool trees the yeah. list and yeah. And if, if those trees are available, that's well thought out. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Well, that's a stamp of approval. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate that. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm, in I'm blushing now. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we probably just sort of dealt with item number five, update on city street planning for the yeah. 400th and the 401st. Yeah. So. Uh, the only other thing, so I knew, I know we're, um, there is talk of doing another. Um, Giveaway. Yeah. So it would be at the. Someone help me, but Every it's portion? no, but it's at um. Oh I have such a. I'm still taken aback by Michael giving me that big <laughs> compliment. Um, Just enjoy is, that. I got it. It's the sustainability fair. Oh, oh it's that? yeah, yeah. So uh, sustainability fair on Earth. Yeah, so there are quite a few hardwood um, species still available from the state nursery. Mm -hmm. They're a dollar fifty each, but they're they're small, so they're going to be bare root, easy to transplant. Um, but they're relatively inexpensive and I would love to give away like 50 of those or something at the sustainability fair and have a little demo and show people how to transplant those yeah. or talk about any other great tree. Idea. I think that's great. Things. Yeah. So what that's, is it, what is the date for that? I there, so believe it's still in discussion, but middle of April, April 20 around earth day, I believe. Um, yeah. Someone approached me in, at Haven park and we were taking care of, um some storm damage and she was asking if we were doing the sustainability fair and I'm like yeah I would love to so uh -huh. it's yeah Good idea how are we doing with our tree planting in our in lower income neighborhoods in Portsmouth so I saw that tool that you sent a while ago and I continuously reference that just to make sure that we're you know we're planning on planting in those um those areas it it's a little difficult because the according to that and I, I apologize I don't have the tool um the um the app offhand right now but that was sort of the peas development area and of course it's kind of it's going to be really hard for us to get in there and plant yeah. and and there's a lot of um there's a lot of impervious uh, material out there so a lot of roads the runway right so it's it's i think we're doing really well overall at least as far as like portsmouth as a whole uh -huh. um you know we can't really plant on Islington or state like certain sections of state or um there are certain areas where we just can't throw any more trees so I was thinking about you know it, do you have ever conversations with Craig Welsh about you know some of his mm -hmm. projects or mm -hmm. anything I have, I've reached out to him and spoke to him about it okay. so okay so it's um, I'll, I'll remind him that yeah we're here <laughs> we're here <laughs> I mean the, the we need to be cognizant of spending city funds on private properties you know granted mm -hmm. you know we have a relationship with the housing authority but they are not the city government mm -hmm. um so uh, there are opportunities and you know we have the grant program so we could talk about yeah. potentially if there's specific requests that are not on public property uh, we could look at that um but th that's something that you know we talked about last year and i think it's a really great idea um you know the the southern portion of the city um, is an area that a lot of affordable housing is located. A lot of it's in apartment type areas that are privately owned, uh, but it's still something that you know would be nice to 
you know, to be able to reach out to those folks and, you know, provide that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, and, and it is a connector to every, all, our whole community. Yeah. No, I, I, so, yeah. I concur. I know you do. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, anything else, Max? Could you give okay. us an update on Hall Cemetery? Thank you. Yeah. So uh, we have that final phase with Seaside Tree Solutions. They are going to be coming in uh, the week of December 31st. So um, the first week of, of January, essentially. And um, yeah, just doing those removals along 282 South, that sort of fence right there. Uh, we're still sticking to everything that's tagged uh, will be removed. And then all of that debris, most of the debris, if it can fit in um, their chipper, will be chipped on site and kind of laid out to create some kind of walking surface, but not a path, like not a publicly, it's not going to go all the way to South Street, but just so when the historic cemetery committee can come in and do their work, they'll have an actual tread to maybe push a cart or whatever the case is. So um, yeah, December 30, the week of December 31st, and uh, they think it'll take a few days to get through all the removals. So as part of the cooperation to get to the back of the cemetery, did we take down those ash trees for the property owner? The ash. Um, are you talking that one large ash inside the well, cemetery? Well, that was inside, but yeah, to get up that hill. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so coincidentally, how it worked was when I had um, that was Knowles, Knowles when we came through and did a, a site evaluation and looked at how they would approach this work. The two abutters, um, Mike Trubridge and um, Jamie. Yeah, I'm same here, but uh, they wanted their own private tree work to be done as well. So essentially what happened was because uh, Knowles was already there, he gave them quotes for uh, additional tree removals, and then that made the approach back there even easier. Um, yeah, I, I think it worked out really well for all parties included, and everyone is really happy with the results. I think it looks fantastic. I ran into um, Petra, Huda, and Kim, and um, they love the sun that's coming yeah, I'm sure. back yeah. of their yard. Yeah. Uh, she was asking about when the, the other work was going to be done, yeah. so I'll reach back out to her. Yeah, and I, the, or maybe you are. I and know. I intended on just going and knocking on some doors and okay. worst case, leaving some kind of leaflet or something, but yeah, they, we did that in preparation for the first phase mm -hmm. with the uh, intent, the second phase would start by the end of November. So obviously we've, the timeline got pushed out a little bit, but um, yeah, it's still, we're still set for that week. And I'm excited. It's going to be awesome to kind of see everything. I, I think we started this in April or May. I can't remember when we first put them on the committee, but it's, yeah, it's a great. It'll enhance our property tremendously. Yeah. I think and so. it, it's a true little gem for Portsmouth. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. Love it. Uh, any other old business um, besides Paulson? Any new business? Yeah, I want to ask Max uh, his opinion of the uh, European beach that's between what old fossils like Peter and I <laughs> refer to as the old high school and the old library. Old high that school. Probably confused me, but yeah. It's <laughs> Discovery Center. Discovery Center. Yes. That is oh, the right. Side of the yeah, oh. yeah. Um, is that is that the one on Austin Street? No, it's on. It's off of Link uh, Islington. Uh, uh, remember where the phone booth used to be? Yeah. yeah. Oh, behind the. Oh, okay. Yeah. Isn't the plan to turn that into a, a pocket park and redo? Yeah, the we're, ramp? we're actually in design right now to replace the. That little wall, yeah, uh, handicap access. Um, so there's going to be, you know, working with corn. You know, we're going to be doing some sort of, you know, improvement, make a park out of it. <clears throat> park, park. But that tree is something that we've looked at um, and, yeah. and said this, you know, what's the, what's the condition of it? Um, I know that it's, uh, you know, there there's essentially one um, mostly dead leader on that tree that's facing like if you're in that parking space or the parking lot right there and you're looking straight at the tree the leader nearest you is is mostly dead i think there's some activity on the on the back side of that stem um but it's also cabled to the other half of the tree so i i spoke with the um and i'm really terrible with names so i apologize but i spoke with the director that's over there uh, she apparently contracts um, 
northeast shade tree uh, to help with the maintenance of that. And that's something that's that wasn't on my radar until we had those discussions. But um, because they they do really good cabling work, we wanted them to go out and inspect and see how viable it still was to stay up there. And if they say, you know, if they come back and and say that 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 cable should not be supporting the live side of the tree or vice versa, we will we'll consider maybe just removing that entire <clears throat> um, failing side of the tree and go from there. But it's it's really odd because the entire other half of that beach is really nice and full and it looks totally fine. So I I wouldn't want to see that tree gone, but I do think um, based on how those conversations go with with Northeast Shade Tree and, and sort of their opinion on on the cable up there, we'll, we'll kind of go from there. But I think up that one half looks really nice still. So I'd love to keep it. Years ago, we took out other trees That's right. in that area. Oh, before any, you know, just the three old people here were on the committee. <laughs> uh, so there was other European beach out in that area that we did take down. One of them was hollow. Yeah. Farther it was the hollow. Park, farther into the parking lot. Oh. Um, and I know too, obviously, with beach leaf disease, hmm. Uh, hmm. who's who, who knows? But I, when we were there pruning uh, late, late summer, early fall, that again, that whole other side looked looked really healthy. So whatever we can do to, to help save that tree for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Do we have any new information on beech leaf disease? Nothing. I don't think there was much of an update at the um, the ISA conference in October, but uh, on the discussion that there are some chemicals, there are some, they're trying different chemicals to do the control. Um, so right now, We've got research going on with the Forest Service over mm. at Bayberg State Park, um, looking at how you know we treat people and stuff could be making it worse, could be spreading it, mm. um, because it's actually a, it's a nematode, so it's actually a worm, you know, essentially a worm in the ground. So are you bringing it on your boots every time you go hiking, you know, wherever you go hike, all this kind of stuff. We, people just don't know yet. Um, they know it hits the ride on a bird and all this, you know, the same stuff that a lot of other insects that can't move themselves find another way to get there. Uh, but we're trying to figure out and see, develop policies for us hikers, you know, anybody, um, because you're, you you could be dragging it with you. Mm -hmm. uh, so the research project was a little funny. We dug a bunch of trees at my place, brought them up there, and they literally poured muddy water off of people's boots on these trees to see if they can kill them. Uh, and it's going to take time to, you know, sort of figure that process out. Uh, there are chemicals, uh, can't think of which one it is. It's a soil drench uh, that they're testing out right now. Uh, other areas, other states have have, it, have had beech leaf disease longer and more abundant than us. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're trying it in some areas. And I, I don't know if any of those tests have come back yet. Um, but it's another one of those things that as soon as you start treating and treating the soil, how long you're going to be treating you know, all this kind right. of stuff. Um, hemlock really delgid, you can get a good control uh, of a delgid, but you got to keep treating your hemlock at some point. The delgids come back, they hitch a ride, you know, get there with wind or whatever else. Um, it's just like EAB. Some towns are treating, some towns are not. Um, we just went and looked at a bunch of trees down in Exeter, um, and they're, they want to put them on a treatment plan. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like a great idea until you start paying that same bill, uh -huh. you know, every, 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 two every, years. Every, every two years going forward. Um, and a lot of ash treatment right now is, you know, 10 to $15 per inch of the tree. Uh, is what people are getting at commercial if you're a higher commercial person come and do it so it, it can add up fast and do we know for sure that it works the chemicals are currently using for eab is oh, yeah. showing good control and, and good uh, control of those trees um but as soon as you get a drought as soon as you get a year that you can't treat you don't get you know you lost you lost everything that you put into that tree oh. so our staff went around and treated a bunch of trees with chuck here in the city our guys have sort of given up on the current ash trees and they're waiting for the next round of ash to grow up behind them. So our guys are going around treating small trees in forest stands that don't attract EAB to them currently. So there's some over off of 33. We found a stand of trees by the railroad track somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, Chuck had known about it. So I connect them with our forest health guys. So they treated those trees and they will continue. We will, con our staff will continue to treat those trees, our forest health staff, to try to get past you know, they're figuring the population, you know, will skyrocket, most of the ash will die, and wait, wait till the other side of that. Uh, and that takes 10 to 15 years. And we're into it by, you know, four or five years already. So, uh, you know, conquered that whole stretch, Canterbury, everything, you know, there's not a stitch of ash 
you know, hanging around that's bigger than, you know, bigger than your arm. Um, and it's just, it, it, you know, just different ways of looking at it. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're trying to learn more about e EAB was great because, you know, came across the country for 20 years. We learned everybody else's mistakes. Um, so it was, it was kind of good. <laughs> it was rough on everybody else. But, you know, like Pennsylvania cut a mile and a half of ash trees, mile and a half wide strip in their wood all the way across the whole state to try to stop. Oh, my gosh. Um, it, it, they tried it. it. It didn't seem like a good idea to me, but it was their good idea because um, everybody said they can only fly, you know, a mile to two or whatever. And, you know, people move in fire, we go to camp, all that kind of stuff. But they, they spent thousands of dollars cutting every ash tree. Um, some insects it works well. Worcester, they cut mm -hmm. what, fifty thousand ash, uh -huh. fifty thousand trees down in Worcester. Yeah, spent millions of dollars cutting every tree, but they say they have one hundred percent control. I doubt it, yeah. but they've got ninety nine percent, you know, control. Right. Uh, you know, on a completely different insect, uh, but it's still a devastating insect. Mm -hmm. uh, ALB is a good tree killing machine, um, but it it has too many hooks, so it's very tough to control it. Hmm. It'll, it'll eat almost anything. Wow, thank you. Any other new business? I had one item of new business. Uh, this is Dick Adams' last meeting, unfortunately. And um, I um, thought we, I don't want to use the word celebrate because I have nothing to celebrate the fact that you're leaving. Um, <laughs> But uh, maybe he wants to maybe celebrate. He does. <laughs> <laughs> His last 8 a.m. <laughs> we do want to honor you. I want to, we all want to honor you. And I, I think anyone who's been on this committee for more than a, a month knows the passion and the wisdom and history that you bring to every meeting. And I was thinking about the civility of this committee. And I think Dick kind of has always represented that, that this is, we've been doing this for quite a while and, and um, meetings are always very civil with people that, it's just, and I think Dick has kind of set the tone for all that. That's so, very kind of you. Uh, you'll be disappointed, <clears throat> uh, perhaps disappointed that I didn't prepare a farewell address. <laughs> I was going to say you changed your mind. <laughs> I, would, I would simply uh, observe that I think this committee, unlike others I've served on, for the most part, uh, we, we we make people happy, and uh, it, it's it's been a pleasure uh, serving. Uh, there's one notable exception that Peter will remember, and probably AJ. Uh, woman named Marge Fernald, who's now <laughs> long dead. <laughs> she lived on Sheffield, and there was a sycamore tree that near her house, and she came to despise that tree. And uh, about every month, we'd get a bag of leaves. <laughs> the sycamore was just doing what they do. You know, the, they, the way they shed their leaves, they look pretty ugly. But she was convinced it was it was a death tree, and uh, <laughs> only her own death that I think brought an end to that. <laughs> it was it was very, very difficult. Uh, I I I tried to be reasonably friendly to people when when this woman I'd be working in my yard and I'd see her coming and I would go to the backyard. <laughs> it felt so bad. <laughs> um, uh, so. That was mostly prior to having the tree crew on staff. Everett would call me and he'd be like, somebody's going to meet you out there with a bucket truck. Just go prune the limb off the tree. <laughs> and we'd have to go out there every few months and prune. I'd have to find a limb to prune <laughs> off. <that. laughs> and she would deliver boxes of leaves to my desk and Everett's, but they were booze boxes. <laughs> so I would get an empty whatever wine bottle box full of sticks and twigs and leaves and everything else. The city had changed the intersection, and you'd got rid of a sidewalk and winded, widened, widening an intersection or whatever, changed it a little bit, put the tree, you know, substantially in what she mowed as her lawn. Um, and she was convinced, you know, the tree's still there now today. <laughs> oh, is it? Uh, it's still yeah. there. Uh, yeah. She was convinced. It, it, it was a multi stem tree, nice tree, you know, good solid, you know, wasn't that big a tree. Oh. But she was convinced that thing was going to total her whole house. Well, I, I brought something, Dick. Um, that's a, that a good story. I hope we didn't give anyone any ideas. <laughs> uh oh.
Oh yeah, speaking uh, of stories. <laughs> first of all, this uh, from Pat. Oh no, it's from everyone. Bring it, brought it in for the committee to give to you. And um, it's a little something made out of something we're all fond of. <laughs> it's just walnut. Oh. oh Oh, beautiful. Oh, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Walnut is um, better in its death than um, its life. Must <laughs> 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 be that way. <laughs> Can we quote you on that? <laughs> <laughs> right on the tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> the first modern day um, arborist who started the new the new culture of arbor. Care in Portsmouth, and where what I saw corn yesterday I said, Oh, I invited him to come to. Uh, so, what I brought is um, <laughs> a, uh, a chocolate cake. <laughs> and <laughs> cake. And not knowing whether proper with um, COVID and all that, uh, rather than bring it in and cut it up into pieces, I cooked it, baked it yesterday. Put it in the uh, refrigerator, let it harden a bit, and then sliced it, and then wrapped each slice. <laughs> so uh, everybody can have That's a slice, and and, and um, Deb made He's some delicious, uh, bake some delicious. Uh, uh, um, They're prettier brackets. than they taste. I just use them as decoration. Well, they, they, they. Uh, I'm smelling them here, and I'm thinking, I can't wait to try them. So, um, and I have some. I, I don't have much in the way of. I'm trying to find something. I brought some water <laughs> and sparkling oh, wow. water. And um, I don't know if anybody needs. Now I, I'm scrounging around trying to find what I. My wife was real good at these 